Hey everyone, it's Mr. N here, and we are doing more related rates. And this video is focuses on inverted cones. So we are going to do related rates on inverted cones. All right, water runs into an inverted conical tank. In other words, the tank stands pointed down, and it's at a rate of 10 cubic feet per minute. Okay, so again, let's highlight some important stuff right here. This is the rate, 10 cubic feet per minute that we're given. So that's a rate. So let's write that in. We are given, and then we have this inverted cone that looks like this. And this is a volume, so this is a DVDT, and this is at 10 cubic feet per minute. Okay, and has a height of 12 feet. So we know that this height in here, let's go ahead and use a different color for that. This height in here, is going to be 12 feet and a base radius so that's right there the radius is 4 feet and the height was 12 feet how fast is the water level rising when the water is 8 feet deep so we want to know when it's 8 feet deep we've got some water in here because it's being poured in and at 8 feet I want to know how fast the water level is rising. So this is a height, dH dt, is what it's asking. So we need a dH dt. That's what we are looking for in this problem. So we need a little bit more information. We need to know what the volume of a cone is. Well, the volume of a cone is one-third pi r squared h. Now take a look. Whenever we do related rates, we know that we've set up all our information, we've read the problem, we understand what's happening, we're filling it up, we want to know how fast that height is changing when we have 8 feet of water in there. Okay, so if I, at this point, take my next step, which is to differentiate implicitly, we have two things that are happening. As the volume changes, it changes based on the radius changing and the height changing. So we've got two things there, and we could go ahead and differentiate and use the product rule and have a drdt and a dhdt, but we're going to take a little trick and do something different with it. On cones, you can do this because they are proportional. The sides, these sides, we're assuming at least that since this is a conical tank, that these are proportional as far as there's nothing funky going on with this. So what we can do is I'm going to take a little slice out of here. And I end up with this triangle. And when this radius right here, if I draw it this way, is 4, and this height is 12. Well, I have a similar triangle in here, because these are right triangles, where that's an R and that's an H. And I want to find that ratio so that when I have 8 feet in there, I can find what my dhdt is. So let's go ahead and set up this ratio, because what... Ultimately, what I'm trying to do is I want to get rid of one of these two variables. Now, since I want to solve for dH dt, I want to get rid of the r. I want to try to put the height in there instead of an r. So I will solve for r in terms of h is what I'm trying to say with that. So let's take a look. Over here, we have our ratio. I could set it up as 4 to 12 equals r to h. So again... You can, at this point, solve for H or solve for R. I'm choosing to solve for R because I want to substitute that R in there so that I can eliminate the R and just put everything in terms of H because I'm looking for a dH dt. If it asks you to solve for a change in radius, well, at this, time, at this point, instead of solving for R, you would solve for H, get rid of the H, so you can have a dr dt that's exclusive there. So, let's go ahead and solve for r. We get r equals one-third h. Cross multiply, and you'll see how we got that. So, let's go ahead and substitute this in up there. So, the volume ends up being one-third pi times one-third h squared, or, yes, h squared times the h. Again, take a look. I took this value right here, and I put it in right there for the R. Okay, 
So at this point, we can go ahead and clean this up and then differentiate after we clean it up. So we end up with the volume equaling one third pi one ninth h squared times h. So just clean it up one more step and we get the volume equals one over 27 pi h cubed. So again, you see what I did here? We got rid of this r because we don't care about what the change in radius is. We're only concerned with what the change in height is. So now let's go ahead and dif differentiate implicitly. So we have dv dt on the left side. On the right side, I'm going to get 1 27th pi times 3h squared dh dt. And we are solving for this. All right, so now we take a look. Do I know a dv dt? Yes, I do. It's 10. Do I know an h? Yes, I want to solve it when the height is 8. So let's just go ahead and put those numbers in and solve it. So this ends up being 10, and this is cubic feet per minute. Over here we have feet squared for the height, so I'm going to end up with feet per minute when all is said and done, so my units will match up. Equals 1 27th pi 3 time, times 3 times 8 squared times dh dt. And let's finish solving this up here. So we're going to go ahead and solve for dh dt, and I'm going to subtract everything, I'm going to divide everything over, and we end up with 45 over 32 pi, which is approximately 0.4476 feet per minute when all is said and done. So now let's take a look. What if we had to solve for the dr dt? So let's do a problem involving that. So let's take a look at the next slide. And on the next slide, let me enlarge this for you a little bit. Okay, so how fast is the radius of the water level changing when the height of the water is 5 feet? So this time, we've got the same situation going on. I am given this cone. Everything's the same. And I've got this inverted cone situation. This is 4. This is 12. And I know my ratios. I know that the ratio was h to r equals 12 to 4, and I was I know my volume is 1 third pi r squared h, but this time I want to know how fast the radius of the water level is changing. And since I want to know that, this is a dr dt, and then I want to change that guy, that h, to be in terms of r. So, and I need to do it when h is 5. So we go ahead and we solve for h in this one. We'll get h equals 12r over 4. So h is going to be 3r. So I substitute this in. The volume is 1 third pi times the radius squared times 3r. So let's see what we can do next. The volume is going to be, well, this reduces with that, and I'll just get pi r cubed in this particular problem. All right, so now we will differentiate implicitly. Remember, again, we did this because the ratio is proportional throughout my cone. Wherever I go, I'm going to have this proportional ratio. So I know what the height to radius will be. So I went ahead and substituted that in to make the problem a little bit easier. Because if you had to take drdt and dhdt, you're going to have a variable there that you can't solve for. So it makes it a little bit more difficult. So this is the easy way around it. All right, so let's take a look. So now we're going to say dv dt, I will implicitly differentiate, equals pi times 3r squared dr dt. All right, well, I'm solving for this dr dt. I know my dv dt from our original problem, dv dt. It hasn't changed. Uh, we were told that the dv dt was 10 feet per, 10, feet, 10 cubic feet per minute. So let's put that in pi times 3 times, hmm, I don't know what the r is. They gave me when the height is 5 right here, but they didn't give me an r. But I know my ratio, so I'll just put it in. 5 equals 3r. I can solve for that r. That r is 5 thirds. So I had the information in front of me, so I just used it. So this became 5 thirds squared dr dt. So let's go ahead and clean this up. Here we're going to end up with 10 equals 
pi times 3 times 25 over 9, dr dt, this goes with that, and then uh, we'll end up with 30 over 25 pi. So let's finish it right here. dr dt equals 30 over 25 pi, and this is feet per minute. Again, the units verify out. This is cubic feet per minute on this side for the dvdt right here, and this is a square feet, so we'll end up with feet per minute when all is said and done. Okay, so then we're back over here, and let's clean this up. If we change it to a decimal, we'll end up with 0.38197 feet per minute. All right, so what is the key on to key to solving related rates involving cones? Well, make sure you understand if you're solving for dh dt or dr dt. So in this one, we had a radius, and we want to know the water level changing when the height, the radius is changing when the height was 5 feet. On the problem before, we wanted to know what the height was changing at. So it's important to understand if you're solving for dr dt or dv dt. Secondly, you need to set up this ratio. This ratio, whatever you have on a cone for the height and the radius, from what you have, and then here you would just put R, or I'm sorry, you would just put, let's use this one, you would just put H and R, and then set up the ratio and solve it. Substitute in for what you don't need. So in this case, since I wanted a DR, I wanted to substitute the H out. So that's why I solved this one for H. If you wanted the R, or uh, I'm sorry, the, the H, DH, DT, then substitute in the R so everything is in terms of H. So basically, substitute out what you need and go from there before you implicitly differentiate. All right, hopefully that helped. Take a look at it again. Practice the cones. Cones take a little bit of practice, but just know these little tricks and techniques, and you'll be fine. So good luck on your related rates.